For the first <laughs> time since 2015, Jon Stewart is apparently back in the anchor chair of The Daily Show last night to put his spin on the state of the presidential race. Take a look. What the f are we doing here, people? <laughs> These two candidates, they are both similarly challenged. And it is not crazy to think that the oldest people in the history of the country to ever run for president might have some of these challenges. Now, Democrats will say that any criticism like this, especially of Biden, is unfair. Because you just don't know Biden like they know Biden. I was in almost every meeting with the president. And the president was in front of and on top of it all. Did anyone film that? <laughs> so when it comes to Republicans, they've got a different strategy for their 77-year-old candidate. Well, first of all, Donald Trump is not an old man. He's an old man! <laughs> he is objectively an old man! They are the oldest people ever to run for president, breaking by only four years the record that they set! <laughs> So, a lot of people are happy to see him back. What do you think about his take on everything? I'm so excited he's back. I, I never stay up that late, and I did to watch him come back. Mm -hmm. He's still got it. I love that he takes shots at both sides. And listen, he's underscoring an issue that we've talked about at this table a lot. A lot of us are never going to agree on this, but I feel like... He makes this point in it, which I've tried to make before, which is democracy is on the line in this election. Donald Trump is the most dangerous president of all of our lifetimes. And Democrats have made that their crowning campaign message. So that means that Joe Biden should be open to the most scrutiny because it is such a, the stakes are so high in this race. So I think it's a legitimate issue. Hillary Clinton came out this week and said Biden's age is a legitimate issue. Nobody is arguing his accomplishments. He has he has delivered. He has well, a legislative record. But there the, it comes down to is he the strongest person to beat Trump? And I'm not convinced he is. At the risk of already. being repetitious about this topic because it doesn't <laughs> stop. Uh, you have on the one hand you've got a guy. Uh, Biden, how old is he, 81? 81. Mm -hmm. And so he, he stammers. He's had a, st uh, a stammer all his life. I think that that's part of the reason he sometimes looks a little doddering. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get the words out. The guy has accomplished a, lo a lot. I don't want to repeat all the things he's done for Americans already. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you basically have a 77-year-old criminal who only, cares about, <laughs> who only cares about getting out of jail, OK? And, and I wasn't here yesterday because all weekend, I was ruminating about what he said about getting us out of NATO. I don't think that yeah. people understand what yeah. that means. Yeah. You know, I saw this video of all these young MAGA guys celebrating Trump and Bubba. Well, you know what? You guys will be draft age. Yeah. You want to start up with Russian, the Russians going into Ukraine and then to Crimea and then to Poland. What's next? Yeah. France? Germany, Italy, you think Americans are not going to be involved in that kind of a war? That's what you're looking at with this guy. You know, I mean, I hate to bring up Hitler, but before, before Hitler became powerful, yeah. he stuck his little toe in. Mm -hmm. And the Brits and the Americans, everybody appeased him and yeah. said, he's not going to get worse. And then they gave over the Sudetenland to him. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, he's invading Poland. And then he's occupying France. And then he gets Mussolini on his side. This is what Putin is going to do. It's very, very urgent that we not elect this man. Yeah. It's not just about us. It's not about just the economy. It's about the world's geopolitical issue. Well, and that's precisely that's, my point. And, the and these are boys so high. who are 13, 14, 15, they will be the ones to go. They will have the draft back again. I lived during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. my, my husband now had to join the National Guard to get out of it because, and those poor boys came back with Agent Orange, all sorts of. My dad fought in Vietnam. Horrible. Yeah. Pardon me, what? He fought in Vietnam, my, my dad. My uncle did okay. well and came back with Agent yeah. Orange and has been sick ever since. And, and people his, don't know what it's like when you send that. boys to fight. I, I think okay. Joy, you make end of speech. You make you make a no, but you make it's a great important. point, and and part of the point is that you have history, that you have um, age, say it, age and wisdom. <laughs> no, age and wisdom. I'm old. Wisdom. No, age and wisdom. I often say because we hang out a lot. You're the sharpest tack in the box, and I know that to be true. <laughs> What's so offensive to me, I love that, that John Stewart is back, but what's so offensive to me is there's difference between age 
and intelligence. Vitality. There's a, in, in a difference between age and vitality. Yeah. There's a difference between age and, uh, and, and really being up on things and having that quickness that, uh, of wit that Joy has. Let me just tell you that Martha Stewart's 82. She's still cooking in front of people. Yeah. She's selling uh, kitty litter. She's still, exactly. Robert De Niro and Al Pacino are getting it in. They've got babies in their 80s, okay? <laughs> Jane Fonda, in on. 86. <laughs> Representative Maxine Waters, 85. Wait, me, okay. Bernie Sanders, 82. Nancy Pelosi, 83. I don't know. They look like they know what they're doing. They have the <laughs> wisdom, they have the history. The problem with this country is that we don't value people with their wisdom. We don't value seniors. We don't value our Okay. In answer to the first question, and then I'm getting to yours, I, I love Jon Stewart. I think he's hilarious, and yeah. I thought he hit a lot of important notes last night. One of the things you said last week, Alyssa, which was important, is it wasn't age, it was vitality. I don't have a problem with Biden. I'm, I voted for Biden. I, I'm in anyone but Trump, but I was voting for Biden anyway. I, but I also am honest about the gaffes I see people concerned with, which I think you can have both things right now. And I think that it's... Voters are concerned, and by telling them they shouldn't be, or that they're following a Republican narrative by listening to it, you're literally saying, like, close your eyes to what you're seeing, or you're making them feel bad for raising something. And as John Stewart said in there, replace age with vitality. He showed stammering in different points with each candidate and said the only record they're breaking as the oldest one is the record they set four years ago. So. It is a fair concern to say this. We asked people to keep their eyes open on January 6th. I don't think it's fair to tell them to close their eyes to what they're seeing. Okay, right then now. don't it's close their, your eyes to the tape, the other, rest of the tape that John Stewart showed. Let's just, can we look at that, please? The footage of the president unable to recall simple facts must have been brutal to watch. James Webb. I don't remember the names. I don't remember the name. I don't remember ever. Buying something for myself. Do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Maples? Um, I mean, I, I don't remember that. Okay, okay. As, as good as my memory is, I don't remember that. But I have a, I have a good memory. So you don't remember saying you have one of the best memories? I, I don't remember. <laughs> I just wanted to point out, I don't think anybody is saying close your eyes to what Joe Biden's going through or what people think he's going through. And I do think a lot of it is yeah. perpetuated by the media. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are saying, OK, we get it. Tell us what we should be doing if we're not doing this. Everyone says, well, we should, you know, we should pay attention. But I will say that 18 months ago, when uh, Biden signed the bill that uh, John Stewart fought for. Yeah, the yeah. Hits, oh, for 9 /11. You know, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he I, he wasn't too old then, and he's still fighting for it. He's still doing all the stuff that needs to be done. You know, and again, as I said yesterday, yes, he's old, okay. But the minute he stops being productive, and this sounds terrible, but the minute he stops being able to do his presidential duty, he's got to go. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not advocating for him to go. I'm advocating for people to not dwell on the fact that he is an age that we cannot change. Mm -hmm. And if he's 18 months ago, if he's bad now, you know, I, I need to see that. Because I don't want to just chuck him out. <laughs> chuck no, him out because he's a, old. And that's, that's a good point because... What they need to be doing to get, the White House needs to get away from this narrative by putting Biden out there. It was malpractice that he wasn't at the Super Bowl. It was the most well, watched event since yes, the it was. Landed. But how many oh, people did he speak to? Yeah, because Why? you could have reached 123 million eyeballs to show I'm vital, well, I'm working for you. I fear the reason they didn't put him out is because it would reinforce the narrative that he's not as sharp as he no, was. No, how about one. maybe That's they didn't put him out because... It is conjecture, but I believe yes. why would they turn down an earned media opportunity like that? That's gold. That's because political. They, because they had, they made a decision because everybody bitches him on it. He's so old, he's not on TikTok, he doesn't know. So now he's on TikTok, everybody's still mad. But my point, <laughs> I mean, but my point being... They, there's a whole, listen, yeah. there's a whole bunch of people. He decided to go to the TikTok people. I wouldn't have done it because I don't think that those are the folks, but they are also voters. Yep. So he went to them instead of going where everybody wanted him he's, to go. He's, do, he's trying to get... This stuff done. He makes jokes I just, about it. I mean, I, I just, I, I know we are in dire straits. I know we are in dire straits. But I don't trust anybody more 
to get me out than this. And if people, listen, this is up to the voters. If the voters decide they don't want Joe Biden, they're deciding they want that other guy. But and I, that is that is the, that is the decision that the voters are going to make, not necessarily given all the information, but it is the best information they have. Well, I think so the two-party system out. left us a little bit screwed because six in ten Americans said they wanted someone other than the Trump versus Biden rematch. And millions of people feel completely politically disenfranchised right Alyssa, now. That that's going to be that the ship has hurt sailed. Is. Yeah. This is what you've yeah. got. This but, is, but, yeah, you, that's and, my and, point. And what's, but, your, and what's your choice? A fascist. A stupid fascist. It's not about the choice. You have, you have, you have also someone that leans dick, dick, like a dictator. No, no one here like is supporting dictator. Trump. I'm working against Trump. I am warning well, that he is vulnerable to... Well, the people that are working to... against Trump need to vote for Biden. He's, he's, he's vulnerable to lose. The you point that Alyssa's... Is, uh, is I don't think there's a plan B. Yeah. And even seeing what I see, oh. I actually am a Biden fan. But I think the more important thing is... I think what by, uh, I think what you're pointing out, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it's not going to be either or. It's going to be a lack of enthusiasm yes. that leaves people on the couch, it, and that's it what is could sleepwalking into a dictatorship. Again, Liz Cheney said it here. I have to say, the people who are going out to make these votes, this is on them. This is on us. This is on well, us. We'll so, all vote. Well, I would hope so, but you know what? A lot of people say they will, and a lot of people are not going to tell you who they're voting and for. And some people are going to be and prevented that's... from voting because of voter suppression, and that's another thing that Republicans do when they can't play to win. They suppress. They cheat, that's and they right. suppress. Right. And so we need to be careful about and, that. And I have to tell you, you mentioned that he's on TikTok now, that Biden's on TikTok. Well, he's going where the young voters are. But the... I think that's important. My daughter's a first-time voter. She's on TikTok. I don't love that she's on TikTok, but she's on TikTok. She would watch something but like that. But there is a That's problem a like yeah. with young people. He has a Gaza issue. I am with Joe Biden on Israel. Young Gaza people do issue. not support how he's handling Gaza. Well, he's you know, young people then have to get out. out. Young people he needs to communicate needs to, to that. No, no. Young people need to learn how this works. I said this a couple of weeks ago. You know, I would love us to go in and just... Pff, take care of business, but that's not how this works. Right. There's diplomacy and it's slow yeah. and it's a pain in the butt, but that's what it takes. If you're not going to go fight and drop a bomb, then you have to sit down and say, okay, how do we work this out? Young people, this is a slow process. It's not this. Mm -hmm. It's not but this. Be so slow for Trump, that... for, but for Trump to say, if, if NATO doesn't pay their bills, by the way, does Trump pay his bills? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to say, if they don't pay their bills, I don't care. Russia can do whatever they want to those countries, NATO. That should be a warning sign to yes, everybody out there, is, including the Republican Party, who are sticking with this criminal. But they are the what? criminal.